The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. My brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. Uh, uh, just real quick, two two super technical things. One, there's a clock on stage that I think is supposed to be counting down, but it's not moving. There we there go. It is. Sometimes it feels like time's not moving while we're doing this show. And two, someone's recording this, right? Like, I didn't check this beforehand, but it's fine. We apparently are going to spin. You can't see this. So we're going to keep up with the theme of things you can't also see. Um, we are staring at two huge televisions that are just displaying our picture. <laughs> the ones that were there, remember, just a second ago? We're apparently going to be fucking barreling those for the entire... Don't take that away. No, don't take it away because it reminds me how damn handsome I am. What a handsome boy. Look at that hair. Also, I'm going to give you, the audience, pretty much a 100% guarantee this is not the biggest table we've ever worked with. <laughs> There is going to be a big spill. <laughs> uh, of our absolute coffee drinks. Uh, I have two uh, coffee drinks. Uh, thank you all for coming here, and thank you to PodCon for having us. Yeah. How was your pod... Uh, with a response of just, like, a, a loud exclamation, how's your PodCon going? Okay. All right, now the nays. <laughs> Who's having a really shitty pot? No. Everybody, uh, just tell me your favorite panel so far. At the same time, one, two, three, go. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. A lot of people said yours, which I Aww. feel is a cheat. Uh, I, I'm really excited being here surrounded by creators and just realizing, like, I'm going to start so many new podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I'm starting a new one, a collabo, me and uh, Lauren Spore from Criminal. Uh, we're on a panel earlier today, and we're doing a new true crime podcast called Ah, Real Murder. <laughs> it's really good. And it's just, it's great. It's like we aren't going to do research at all. Yeah. My theory is that there's been like a trillion people who've ever been on Earth, right? Yeah. And so law of large numbers, somebody's been murdered in every conceivable way. <laughs> And so I can just talk about, like, there was one dude who got drowned in a bunch of horsey sauce from Arby's. And it's probably true. Probably true. Yeah. I, um, I'm going to start a new one with Kevin Porter from Gilmore Guys, um, where we watch and discuss every episode of Entourage. Uh, and we call it Entourage. Is there any way I can pre-subscribe to that? <laughs> Because here's the thing. Maybe it's good. No. It's not. But what my book presupposes is... My new thing's a solo project. It's about the pest. Okay. And it's called Save the Pest for Last. And it's a thrilling docudrama about There's a me. John Leguizamo movie called The Pest. That... Sorry, I'm sorry, Griffin. A John Leguizamo vehicle. <laughs> It, it is drives like, right off like a cliff. Right off a cliff into a, a shark tank or something. And it has a really buckwild intro. It's not especially funny to talk about on the stage. And it's yeah. not funny to watch. watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this is the problem, though. I'm glad we've hit on it, sort of arrived at it organically. I mean, we've been doing a lot more live shows, and what we find is it's hard to sort of city in, city out, keep the energy up. And we're just three boring guys. I mean, we just did Tacoma last night. I know. know. It's, we're, 
Uh, I was led to believe that Seattle was Tacoma's bitter enemy, so I'm so happy that you could celebrate them. Um, so it's hard to keep the energy up. We don't have pyrotechnics or anything, so we have been sort of obsessed with this audio file that we found. It's not the pest. I, we wouldn't do it's that. not the pest. You. Because we love you, damn it's it. It's not the pest. It's, um, it's 45 minutes of Paul Stanley stage banter. You know Paul Stanley from Kiss? From Kiss. He's the one with the star? Yeah. So rather than, like, us try to keep the energy, like, up and get everybody really excited, um, we thought we'd just let Paul Stanley do it. Not For 45 real. whole minutes. <laughs> Welcome to the fucking dungeon. Not real. It's not real, Paul Stanley. He couldn't make it, but we do have this audio file. He sends his regrets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just one thing you should, if you're, for the next couple minutes, um, you should pretend you're in Toronto. That will really help. It'll, it'll really also, hide the effect. Also pretend like you're playing the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and uh, Navi is floating over your shoulder for reasons that will become instantly apparent. Also pretend like you know anything about the titles of Kiss songs. Yeah. So you know what he's building up to. He's going to be building up to some things that you're not going to be aware of where he's headed. So just sort of All right, hang let's, in there. Okay. So let this, just absorb this and let it get you so psyched. This is 45 minutes of Paul Stanley. Well, two minutes of Paul Stanley stage. Two break. minutes of 45 minutes of Paul Stanley. Right. Toronto! You feel good! All right, then, listen. You know, we may be under clear blue skies, but you know, it's getting a little cool out tonight, but that ain't gonna stop us, because if we try hard enough, we're gonna get this place. I said we're gonna get this place. Can we get it a little right, louder? Please? Listen, I want to know if we got any people here tonight that like to get high. We got any people tonight that are high? All right, then listen. You know, every once in a while we like to get a little wasted. We like to take a taste of. Alcohol! And I tell you, when we won't get going, we ain't gonna be drinking no Southern Comfort, no, no! No, we ain't gonna be drinking no tequila! Cause I tell you, when we won't get going, you know there's only one drink that gets us moving! There's probably a kid involving alcohol he's building to. I, I can't hear you. Louder, Coke. All right, Toronto. Uh. Listen, listen. You know, it wasn't too long ago we was here, and I tell you, every time we come here, damn it, it just gets better and better. You people are dynamite. That's it. It goes on like that for another 43 minutes. And we've listened to that like five times in the last 48 hours. Listen! Listen! Toronto! Gotta get the take who not! <laughs> Throw it out, stuff! Does anybody know what fucking alcohol song this is building to? Old Jen? Old Jen? Jen? Wolf Jen? I get drunk on Old Jen. It's really gross. <laughs> listen, listen. I like the way the dust particles settle in it. You gotta find the master sword. Toronto! Toronto! Get in! Hey, force. let's do a podcast. <laughs> uh, here on... You can't just play 45 minutes of Paul Stanley Audio and call it a podcast. Or can you? Or can. Hello, PodCon. My new podcast. Uh, so thank you to Paul. Stand-em. That's what I would call it. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not, that's all right. Eh? Uh, it's not a good reaction, We though. take your questions and turn them alchemy-like into wisdom. And so... We'll... Oh, thank you. Uh, so we're going to do that now. These lights are so bright. They're very bright lights. So bright. Hey, let's take it down. No, don't take it no, down. We'll I like it. Down. I am traveling from Salt Lake to Seattle, and I'm wondering how the heck I'm supposed to take my skateboard on an airplane. <laughs> I have no idea. And I don't want to leave it behind because it is my made form of transportation. <laughs> That's from Skater Boy on the Salt Air. Salt. At that point, isn't isn't the airplane your? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's skitching, skitching the whole way here. 
Please watch out for the jets. They are not conducive to skitches. <laughs> I mean, you got a skateboard onto the tarmac. Absolutely. Up the luggage thing, onto the wing, transfer over the chassis of the into plane. Into jail. Into jail, out of jail, back onto the wing, <laughs> smash through the window of the airplane. The flight will be grounded. They need that window so bad. Yeah. It's important for the vacuum. The vacuum, I don't understand much about airplane technology, but I think the vacuum's quite important. I have seen people bring like really weird shit on an airplane. Yes. Can you just can you just bring Yeah, it's not very <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> funny thing to say, Travis. Thank you. Is this your first episode of My Brother, My Brother, and Me? So. Uh-huh. The hard part is TSA. Because cause they're going to be like, do you have anything dangerous? And you're going to be like, I should fucking say I do. <laughs> do you have any paper you need shredded? And then you do a flip you do a kickflip, and then you shred somebody's passport <laughs> with how hard your kickflip is. They say, do you have anything electric in there? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, it is. It is electrifying. It's, oh, okay. It's, you have any liquids? Yes. The piss you're going to piss when you see me do my cool <laughs> skateboard tricks. If you get your... It's not conventional or cheap, but if you get your passport printed on a skateboard... <laughs> They are going to have to let you board with it. Or get your passport photo taken with your skateboard in it. And so you show up, they're looking at your ticket, they're like, this isn't you, and you're like, oh, hold on. Here's what you're going to have to do. You could wear it as a hat in the passport photo and be like, no, it's a medicinal skateboard hat. I need it for life. You're going to have to break your skateboard down into its component parts and oh. disguise them as other parts of your luggage. Like use the wheels on your suitcase, right? Yes. And put the skateboard board, I th- the board part on the back of the suitcase, and then put the trucks in the suitcase. Trucks? Truck. The trucks, yes. Axles? Yes. I, I don't know. I'm pretty in touch with skateboard culture. I don't know how the security line at the TSA works, but I think one of the main things they hate is components. Like, yeah. Any sort of component-based thing, they're like not wild about. Even if you promise them, no, no, no. You, it's cool. I'm going to build a skateboard. <laughs> I still don't think that's gonna. I know how this looks. I know how this looks. What with all the components, <laughs> but it is for a skateboard. Uh, how about a Yahoo? Ooh. If you've never listened to our show, sometimes we make fun of people on Yahoo Answers. No, we make fun with. Them. We make fun with them. We help them out. Are just... there any people who actually uh, just show hands? Any people who have never listened to our show before? They're here. Anybody? Hey, all right. All right. All right. All right. Jesus. New people! Every time I come to PodCon, it just gets better and better! You people are dynamite! You people are dynamite! The podcast is not usually us shrieking Paul Stanley quotes. Uh, this Yahoo is sent in by the delivery man himself, Seth Carlson. Thank you. Woo. It's Yahoo Answers user Carol who asks, Should spaghetti be way shorter? <laughs> I'm not talking about that macaroni. I'm not talking about that penne. I'm talking about that short spaghetti. I really love word choice in Yahoo's is always my favorite part because the question is not could spaghetti be shorter, but should it? Ethically. Should, would it be okay? Morally, is spaghetti too long? <laughs> I know a lot of times I'm sucking one of those good, good nudes up and I get about... Whoa, that's wait. not a good... No, okay. In, in retrospect, it's not a good truncation, and we've all learned a lot here tonight. <laughs> Maybe um, dulls. Dulls? No, just noodles. It's noodles. Noodles. Noodles? Noodles. 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 You know what I'll say? Spaghetti noodles. Sometimes I'm consuming a spaghetti noodle, and I get two-thirds of the way through, and I'm like, ugh, I get it. You're talking, you're saying, <laughs> it's Take like, a break. <laughs> I get to that point, and I'm like, ugh, I'm yeah. over it. You're saying that we need... What if you get full at that exact oh, moment? Oh, yeah. I don't want the last third of this noodle. Too much. It's too much for me. You're saying way shorter is 
way too short. You want a master's finesse on these noodles. A keen eye taking maybe 8% of the noodle off. Just I would like bespoke of... noodles, yeah, yes. Yeah. I would like someone who measures the inside of my mouth and then makes noodles accordingly. I want someone, I want a waiter to come to my table with what appears to be a mop full of spaghettis of varying lengths and then ask me very personal questions about my upbringing. Yeah. Select the right noodle. Measure your mouth with a special ruler. <laughs> and then maybe come around with a golden pair of scissors that they discard immediately after you throw it right away. And it's just like, that's too much noodle. And they just take care of it. Ooh, they could cut it right in front of your mouth. Right in front of your mouth. Oh, You're going yeah. like, that's it, when? Mm, yes, of course, sir. <laughs> okay, what if they just come to the table with a bathtub full of spaghetti and they stand there and just like let you keep sucking it up until you're full. And then and hidden inside is a flag. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to space camp, my it friend. Is. I feel like if spaghetti was way shorter, you would have fork issues. Pretty, this would now become a spoon Huge food. Problem. Yeah. Well, not I, only that, how unsatisfying it would be if you were like... Uh, uh, uh. You like the, the noodly yeah, hanging, the, yeah, Cthu the Cthulhu effect of the noodles. There's a, there's a certain sound wave that happens as you inhale the noodle. That's like... Right? That's yeah, fun, also like, my vape noise. <laughs> Is there spaghetti flavor of vape? Yup. <laughs> if we're going to make them shorter, we should probably make them thicker as well. Oh, God. I want... How thick are we talking? What's the diameter like, juice? Like baked bean can size. <laughs> spaghetti noodles that are about this long and this big around. I want it to be like, man, I want some spaghetti in four hours. I better start braising this. <laughs> So, like, a puck of spaghetti. <laughs> exactly. How do you want it? Uh, it only comes al dente. <laughs> <That is laughs> it can't only get very cooked. That's great. You can just lay it on its side and just take a big <laughs> bite of it from the top. I like You're it. laughing, but there's a dark part of you. The you would. You do. You, you. There's a part of you that's like, put a sear on it, maybe. I don't know. I need a nasty noodle can. Yeah, I eat a nasty can of noodle. Where does the sauce... Go. It's just sauce flavored. If you put it, oh God. Obviously, yeah. I said, this is not a food of opulence. This, this is a food of no. convenience. It's obviously, speed. it's obviously inside. Oh, yeah. Like so a secret pocket. If you cut it, it just sort of. Oh, gotta be careful now, because now we're talking about a big ravioli. No, no, no. <laughs> Holy shit! No. It's all connected. Okay. All oh, pastas, the kind of the same. Yeah. Okay. Time out. Time out. Quick ravioli check, if anybody's ever... Anyone here a ravioli? You have to tell us there's entrapment. You, you know that t classically, this, the marinara is not stuffed inside the ravioli. Like a gusher. Like a savory marinara gusher. It's not like that. No. Oh, no, that's a, that's, that's a pizza roll. Okay, fair. What? Why have they never made savory gushers now that I'm thinking about it? <laughs> Fucking cowards, all of you. Here's what it should be. It should be a packet of Gushers. 99% of them are sweet. One is savory. One. I gotta be careful though. I don't want my head to turn into a big ravioli like the commercials for Gushers. So, recently at my parents' house, I found an old drunk full to the brim with dusty puppets. Hello, where the dusty puppets? <laughs> Hello, Toronto! No, Toronto! I, found, I also found proof that my father was involved in competitive puppetry. Okay, hold on. You find a trunk... <laughs> you find a trunk of dusty puppets. That speaks for itself. Uh, my father what is used the, puppets. What is the proof that your dad used to do competitive... Articles. Uh, it, Clippings. The Are, only thing I think is a trophy for competitive medal. puppetry. Are, no, a local teen competes with puppets. Yeah. This could have been something we talked about as a family before, and maybe I just forgot. No. You would not have forgotten. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, I feel like I would have remembered puppets. Yep. Either way, this cannot go unaddressed. When is the best time to bring up that you know about your father's secret past as a competitive puppeteer? That's from, quote, I know about the puppets in Paris. Okay, I would like to pose a scenario. Justin is the dad here, okay? 
J'accuse, my boy! <laughs> I don't think he want to do that. His father's a strong man, and he put the puppets away for a reason. I'm not ready for whatever kind of reaction he's going to have. <laughs> Like a cobra. He competes at a professional level. Yeah. What is a puppet competition? Can we address what competitive puppetry okay, is? Okay, op options. One, you're trying to knock off the other guy's puppet. With your puppet with or your with your puppet? By puppeting so hard, it is non-contact. Non-contact competitive puppeteering. <laughs> <laughs> the puppet flies off the You head. scare them very bad with your good... <laughs> yeah. Okay, option two. How long can you puppet before someone realizes it's not a real person? That's it. Start the and clock. When, when, Hi, everybody. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Just another hard day. Wait a minute. Stop the clock. <laughs> this guy's felt. <laughs> <laughs> He's when, got googly eyes. When Sesame Street came out, nobody knew. And so reviews of the first episode of Sesame Street was like, they have the biggest bird I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> It talks at everything. They found a real fucking cryptozoological monster, and it loves cookies. Ten out of ten stars. Put it on PBS, Darla. There's a giant hairy elephant, and it's talking. <laughs> He's in a trash can. I don't even know Daniel, what's up. Wait. My one-year-old son loves Sesame Street, though. That's probably really what it's like for him. <laughs> that must be nice. Love to go back. To imagine. <laughs> to have an imagination again. So, to believe in hope and goodness. Competitive puppeteering. <laughs> Competitive puppetry of the penis. Is that anything? <laughs> I don't want it to be a th Is that just like... Ah, yeah, ah. Puppetry of the penis does exist. That's not from my mind's eye. It was on Showtime late at night when I was a teenager. <laughs> Maybe... Maybe, maybe, maybe in competitive puppetry in a penis, you're using the, your competitor's penis. Yes, absolutely. That's a short match. Yes, I give. Mercy, mercy, mercy. All right, and we're ready to, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. Uh, how about a Yahoo? I have another one. Wait, hold on. I think I know what competitive puppetry is. Oh, good. Two puppeteers, the same puppet. And they take turns, and it's like, no, that was that was. Oh, I thought you meant two is. hands, one puppet. <laughs> and I'm not gonna make the cheap joke that sounds like two hands, one puppet, because that's below us, and it's fucking 2017 A.D., the year of our Lord, on the Gregorian calendar. Stop it. This is from the delivery man, Seth Carlson, again. Thank you, Seth. It's Yahoo Answers user, the DS guy, who asks, is a jelly donut a donut? Now, listen. Y all, y all. You think you know where listen. this question... <laughs> you think you know where this question is going. I mentioned the donut man to my Sunday school teacher. So he played his guitar and sang a song. Life without Jesus is like a donut because there's a hole in the middle of your heart. Everyone loves this jam. You guys know I, that one, right? I said, what about donuts without holes? He played and sang the same song, but with different lyrics. A donut without a hole is not a donut. So I said, what about a jelly donut? He sang the same song with the lyrics, a jelly donut is not a donut. So is he right? Is a jelly donut not a donut? Is a donut without a hole not a donut? Is a life without Jesus like a donut? Is there a hole in the middle of your heart? Jesus wants to fill that hole. My, my favorite mental picture of this is the progression of the Sunday school teacher's face. Plays the first song. But what about a donut without a donut hole? Well, that's ridiculous. Okay, second song. And then third, what about a jelly donut? <laughs> Jelly donut is not a donut. The, this Sunday school teacher looked in the mirror that morning before class and said to himself, I am out of things I know about Jesus. <laughs> I have a Sunday school class today, and I've taught them all the cool things that I learned about Jesus. All his wanderings and his ways, I have taught them all. I should try to vamp. I hope someone asks a question that allows me to vamp off of it. But here's the thing. If you tell a six-year-old 
But life without Jesus is like a donut. How's that six-year-old not like sweet? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking sick, bro. I love donuts. Yeah, donuts are awesome. If I remember correctly, this song is literally like, it's good for a little while, but then like, no. Then you hit the center where there's no more donut? That's not how donuts work. I've never eaten a donut and be like, ah, ah. Hey, where'd it go? <laughs> what the hell? Why did you do this to me, Jesus? Uh, there's no donut in the middle of the donut. I, do you think that anybody tried to tell that cat, like, I know you think you have something with this track, but <laughs> that sounds pretty rad. I don't think we necessarily want to compare these two things. Also, long johns are donuts. They don't have holes. Is a Danish a donut? No, it's a Danish, stupid. <laughs> now, wait. Okay. Is a jelly donut just a Danish? Jelly donut's just a closed over Danish that hasn't been circumcised. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, think about it. I'd rather not. No, I get it. You brisked that jelly donut, now we're working Danish territory. Just we're in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on. Justin's moved the mic out. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, hold on. The people who raised their hands just looked around. So confused. I am a. I come from a land of the ice and snow. No, that's a very, very litigious band. Hey everybody, welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. We're so honored to be at PodCon. When the when uh, the McElroy brothers got the invite, we didn't know if we would also be on the list, but we begged and pleaded our way in, and we're so excited to be with you to share oh, God. this. I can see not very well Justin's iPad from this side of the table. I just saw sort of a brown sort of mass that maybe is sort of... Don't give it away. Okay. <laughs> Big news, everyone. Cinnabon against God. <laughs> it doesn't say that. That's me editorializing. S I N a bun. Yeah. Cinnabon, thank you. Cinnabon is stuffing a cinnamon roll inside a cookie. <laughs> Wait. There's no space inside. Unless a cookie. this cookie is the fucking TARDIS, I do not understand how this feat is possible. It's putting a cinnamon bun. Cinnamon Wait, roll. what? A cinema bun. Cinema bun. A cinema bun. Cinema bun inside a cookie. Uh, they're taking a cookie and they're putting a fucking cinnamon roll inside of it. <laughs> that should be the end of the press release. <laughs> the My favorite thing about Munch Squad is that sometimes in order to justify, I'll just say it, their sin, they, have, they come up with a fake um, situation that they're solving. Like, no, you see, it's not a sin against Jesus. It's um, we're solving a problem. And the one, the fake problem they've invented for this delight, not enough diabetes. <laughs> yeah, right. Is is one of my favorites so far. The days of deciding between a fresh warm cookie Ew. and an ooey gooey cinnabon cinnamon roll are no more. Well, These are you. two different day periods that you eat these foods. Also. Who made both of them at the same time? Who was like looking at the oven like, what's this? Oh, we fucked up. Oh. We did two bakings. Um, in honor of National Cookie Day, Cinnabon will, I mean, desecrate the idea of a cookie. <laughs> It'll slit its throat in front of its family. <laughs> Cinnabon will offer the most ingenious treat to date, the cookie bomb bite. This item takes the beloved chocolate chip cookie to another level. Hell, Down. Really bad. <laughs> By baking a bond bite, imagine the, the, like, pretend you're the person creating this and see if your brain doesn't try to stop you. It probably will. <laughs> it takes the bond bite, the bite sized version of Cinnabon's world famous cinnamon roll, inside yeah. a chocolate chip cookie. It's only Where? Where? <laughs> Where? Uh, it will only be available for a limited time, as will the people who consume it, ironically. <laughs> 
There's no better way to celebrate National Cookie Day than with the quintessential combination of cookies and milk. Stop acting like you're fucking honoring the cookie when you're remixing it and shitting on it. There's no better way to celebrate your last National Cookie Day. (laughs) To provide guests with the ultimate dunking experience. Who dunks a fucking cinnamon roll? (laughs) They, They partnered with Fairlife to provide a free eight ounce bottle of milk, your last one for every cookie bite purchase on December 4th. And we put cookies in it. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. The nutrient rich ultra, ultra filtered milk is lactose free. It contains 50% more protein, 30% more calcium. I am. Wait, and 50% ca- less sugar than regular milk. Okay. Do not care about the nutrients in the milk of the nightmare bomb that I'm shoving down my hate gullet. That's the worst misdirect. I've ever heard. But the milk is so wicked good for y'all. <laughs> Seriously. No, the milk's still only gonna cover for yeah, the sugar the, mess. The milk's like, nah, it's fine. He's with me. <laughs> the bad cookie will hide in the milk in your tummy. Um, there's more. Sharing a passion for the highest quality ingredients. Yield. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if this shit's made out of emeralds. <laughs> And Cinnabon and Fairlife make the perfect pair, just like milk and cookies. Let's check in with Jill Thomas, the vice president of global marketing for Cinnabon. (laughs) Free me from this prison. (laughs) The cookie bomb bite is one of our yummiest examples of creativity to come out of the innovation kitchen. (sighs) Hatred and creativity are different things, Jill. But they occupy the same part of our our awful brain. The extent, the extent to which we despise humanity has never been more full. We've on. never hurt you more. The delicious cookie bomb bite joins two extraordinary baked goods to create an unexpected out of this world flavor combination not to be missed. How? <laughs> because here's the thing. Show me a picture of this, this yeah, bad boy. All I'm picturing is like Saturn, where there's literally just like a salmon bun thing. Uh, you're not that far off, my man. I don't know if y'all, probably not, right? But I can try to. Somebody, so, yeah, I mean, I need it too. That's what you're all fucking thinking. You wanted to laugh, but like secretly you're like, hell yeah. But here's the, I'd fuck that up, no question. I just, it's. Do you think after they put this press release out, somebody leaned in and were like, why didn't we just do like a chocolate chip cinnamon roll? And they're like, oh, shit. Ah, shit. Damn it. Damn it. That's because they were getting into their uh, partnership with Nashville's Cricky Co- Christy Cookie Company, the brand behind the famous Double Tree by Hilton Cookie. We take your favorite hotel cookie and we put it <laughs> in a fucking cinnamon roll. What do we care? <laughs> we take your favorite hotel cookie and put it in your favorite airport cinnamon roll. <laughs> our partnership with Christie Cookie Company is just one example of our dedication to supporting premium bakery brands that offer craveable products on par with Cinnabon. Are you sure you want to do that, Jill? <laughs> you sure you want to wash the throne that hard? There is one kind of day you can have after eating one of these, I feel like. And in a way, like, maybe it's a relief you eat one of these, and it's like, well, clear my schedule. Yeah, it, yeah. Tra- it transforms your khakis into sweats. <laughs> this is a cookie you look at all day and think, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. I still have things to do in this world. Uh, how about another question? Yep. I work in a bridal store. Oops. Oh, no. Oh, the questions okay. went away. I work in a bridal store and have to work in pretty close proximity to a lot of our customers. When I notice that someone smells particularly nice, it's such a pleasant surprise. I often find myself complimenting them on it. <laughs> no! It's too late. It's too late for them. Next question. Move on. They're done. They fucked up too bad. The problem is saying, wow, you smell really good. Sometimes comes off the wrong way. Are you sure? What? <laughs> Go on. However, I think saying sorry, I'm not trying to be creepy, might actually make it worse. Oh. Yes. Oh, you don't say. Both are right. <laughs> Should I stop complimenting this aspect of my customers completely or just stop apologizing for it? And that's from Soler- Sorry for Smelling in Nebraska. Are you here? I heard so much response. Yes or no? And I'll count it down. Is this acceptable behavior? Yes or no? Three, two, one. No! 
So I had a lot of yes was, there. Oh, I heard okay. six yeses. Travis's challenge accepted. We're gonna do round robin and try to say this in a way that isn't creepy. No, 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 no. We can do that. We can do that. Because people have edited it out and put, make it sound like a thing. I think some of us have acting degrees. Okay. Yeah. Justin has three quarters of an acting degree. I, I have a whole acting degree. All right, here we go. Oh. No, now, wait, I, that was just yeah, me oh, no. clearing my throat. I gotta let him get through it because just it let might me change. get to it. Yeah. Your musk. Okay. Is no. Okay. You gotta let him get through it. So, you gotta let me get through it because you don't know how it's gonna end. The fragrance you're exuding. <laughs> Right? No, I'm, I'm out. Okay, I quit. Let me try. I'm tapping out. Okay, everybody be quiet. No. No. Your can't. smell. No, can't start with a sniff. Okay, oh, let me try. Let me try again. Let me okay, try. okay, okay. Mm. No. Okay, no. Absolutely not. Cannot. Griffin, do you Your wanna... particle. All right. They smell good. You're done. It's done. <laughs> what if you're just like... Oh, nice. <laughs> no okay, need to. No let's need. Act it out. No, act it out. You do it. I'm leaning down to look at uh, a veil that I like. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. What if I don't do the sniff? Okay, let's try again. Okay. Oh, nice. What? What's up? There's a good smell in here from somebody. <laughs> Somebody in here smells good. Live your life. Not me. The... Not me. Who else is it? Live is your... it me? I guess so. Or somebody else who was in here before. That's not weird, is it? I love you. I love you too. That dress is for our wedding now. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. I stole your fucking wedding. Live your life with the confidence of the person willing to claim the good smell. Is them. <laughs> It's me. You got I mean, it. I know. If you missed up before going outside, you know you're the one with the good smell. You always know if you're the one with the smell, no matter what kind of smell it I, is. Th- actually, here's the thing. I live my life every day afraid that I smell bad and no one's telling me. That's just like, I leave her room. Jesus. Like, I know. I have a lot of weird anxiety. A lot. And so for someone to look at me and be like, hey, straight up, you smell good. No. Yeah. Still, you said that out loud, and even then, after you said it, you still realized it's not good. I think the only way that would actually work is if I traveled back in time to myself and said, hey, you smell good. There's no good way, really, to compliment a stranger about more or less anything, which is fine. Maybe an anonymous comment card situation. Everybody should have, like, a suggestion box that they carry, like, a fanny pack uh-huh. on their back, though. Yeah. And so you slip it in there where they're not like, rip, zip. And it's like, totally cool. The smell is nice. No, it's still not good. What about, okay, what about a Miss Connections webpage? Still not good. Uh, But but then it just says, like, you came into my store and you smell good. And then you'll be like, I think that was me. Go to them and say, hey, what's your LinkedIn? And they'll tell you, you say, okay, you got a good recommendation coming your way. Keep an eye out. Keep an eye on your inbox. What if there was just a sign over the door that says someone in here smells good? Then you could just, like point to you could ask them what shampoo ooh uh, ooh ooh ooh, ooh. What? Oh, never mind I got too young <laughs> yeah. all right I think I've got it I think I've got it okay you're they're trying on the dress or veil or whatever and you say what's that smell no no <laughs> I can't you can't especially not when someone's changing clothes yeah can't can't do it you think they're gonna be talking about a but what? no, yeah. you can't. What's that smell has never been followed with the residents because it's great. all right. Stop, stop. What's that good smell? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, what's that good smell? That's is good because you, en- you enlist them in the mystery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Solve it. Yeah, yeah, let us sniff around together. And they might say, Oh, I have a, a scent on it, might be me. And then you can say, like, Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. Done. Don't need to tr- drag it out any. What have you what have you gained? <laughs> <laughs> what 
What have you gained? This is it. Why can't you smell the smell, think in your head, that's nice, and then store that positive moment away for yourself? Even that's kind of fucking creepy. Yeah, it's true. But I'm going to thing. save, I'm not going to say anything, but I'm going to save the memory of your great smell for myself later. <laughs> I'm uh, going to enjoy it later. I, I think maturity is just a series of starting to say really fucked up things and then thinking, now nah, that's just for me. Yeah, that one. Or that one's staying in the old dome. Or just not thinking them. Listen, I wish I had that kind of self-control. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Griffin. Thank you so much for listening to uh, this episode of My Brother, My Brother and Me, our live show from PodCon. PodCon was a ton of fun. If you didn't get a chance to go to it, uh, you, you you missed out on seeing some really great panels. Or did you miss out? Because you can still get a streaming ticket and watch archives of all the stuff uh, that, that we talked about there. Um, thank you so much to everybody who was there. You all were very, very cool, and it was nice to meet everybody. Um, let's talk about some of our sponsors this week so you can get back to listening to the rest of the episode. Our first sponsor is NatureBox. If you're trying to eat better, the holidays are a minefield. They got chocolates. They got cookies. They got candied canes. Let NatureBox help you out with snacks that you'll love that are delicious and better for you. NatureBox has over 100 delicious snacks made from high-quality, simple ingredients. That means no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. Just go to NatureBox.com, choose your snacks, and NatureBox will deliver them right to your door. And new snacks are added every month. And if you don't like a snack, they'll just replace it for free. Right now, NatureBox is offering My Brother, My Brother, and Me fans 50% off your first order when you go to NatureBox.com slash My Brother. That's NatureBox.com slash My Brother for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's NatureBox.com slash My Brother. I also want to tell you all about Harry's, because Harry's is the best way to get razors that you can use on any of your parts that you don't want as much hair on anymore, I guess. I have a, a Harry's razor that I use to shave with, and it gets my face as smooth as a seal's ass. But anyway, you already know that Harry's is dedicated to making amazing quality products at a super reasonable price. But Harry's also makes a great gift. So this holiday, Harry's is offering custom and limited edition shaving sets. They come with German-engineered five-blade cartridges that provide a close, comfortable shave. They got sh- foaming shave gel that smells amazing. They have special limited edition winter chrome and emerald green handles, and you can personalize it with engraving. Sets come ready to gift in beautifully designed gift boxes and start at just $10. And as a special offer for fans, we have partnered with Harry's to give you $5 off your order when you go to harrys.com slash mybrother. This offer is only available for the holidays. So this holiday, give Harry's and give handsome. Shipping cutoffs end this week, so act now to get your gifts delivered in time. To get a limited edition holiday shave set while supplies last, go to harrys.com slash my brother right now. That's harrys.com slash my brother. Got a few jumbotrons for you as well. First off, I want to tell you about Toontown Public Works. It's the hot new podcast. So much buzz at PodCon. People are just gabbing, gabbing, gabbing about Toontown Public Works, and those people know about fucking podcasts. Do you like old cartoons that are wrongfully or rightfully forgotten? Do you like hearing about the latest in animation news? Do you like discussions of the sociopolitical implications of the Three Stooges? Join H.T. the Raccoon, K.C. the Dog, and Cirque the Cat in Toontown Public Works, a podcast of three tunes going through shorts that fell in the public domain while giving their thoughts on the tunes of past, present, and future. P.S. Casper isn't a dead kid, but the product of ghost fucking. Look it up. I believe I will. Anyway, go to iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts and search for Toontown Public Works, or just follow them on Twitter at Toontown Public. Uh, Another Jumbotron here. For this one, I want you to help out the kids of the Running to Places Theater Company at bit.ly slash pobuddiesnerfect. That's a great little URL you've secured there. Running to Places is a nonprofit youth community theater company for teens. Participation is totally free, and it's crazy fun. My name's Joey, and I founded R2P 11 years ago. I definitely did not get approval from my board to pay for this ad. Please help me not get fired while helping us keep R2P free for the kiddos by donating at bit.ly slash pobuddiesnerfect before somebody notices the charge on our card and starts asking questions. If we get enough donations to cover the cost of the ad, am I good? I think so. Please help this person keep their job, and uh, please help keep this really cool-sounding theater company alive. This sounds like a really great way to uh, spend some of your bucks this this holiday season. 
Uh, speaking of, there's also the Mabim Bam Angels Project where uh, you can help out people in Huntington who are in need this holiday season. Uh, our, our local paper puts out a list called Empty Stockings. It's just a, 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 a list of some of the most like heartbreaking things that uh, people are asking for this, this holiday season. Uh, and we just ask that our, our fans who are always so supportive of stuff like this to go to mbmbamangels.com and check out some of the things that you can uh, help help out with for people in Huntington this, this holiday season. Uh, we sure do appreciate your generosity, and we are sure that they do as well. Uh, thank you to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and check out all the great shows there, shows like Lady to Lady, Stop Podcasting Yourself, Tights and Fights, and so many more. And if you want to check out our other shows, you can go to McElroyShows.com. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to everybody at PodCon who came out to the panel. Uh, I think next week we are going to have just sort of a regular episode, and then uh, after that, uh, well, two two Mondays from now is actually Christmas Day, so it'll probably go up on Tuesday, but we're probably just going to put up our Candle Nights live show that we're doing in Huntington that we are so stoked for. Uh, thank you all so much for, for grabbing tickets for that and helping it sell out as, as quickly as it did. So, uh, yeah, we will talk to you next week. Goodbye. Hey, Helen Hong. Yes, J. Keith Van Stratton? What's the difference between a layover and a stopover? I have no idea. What's the difference between optimal and optimum? I have no idea. Well, what's the difference between an actual conversation and a promo for our new show on Maximum Fun, Go Fact Yourself? Nobody has any idea. Go Fact Yourself, the game show with celebrity contestants, super smart experts, and answers to questions you've never even asked. Listen twice a month on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. And be in the audience for our tapings of Go Fact Yourself in downtown L.A. It's free. Go to GoFactYourPod.com for more info. We're having a very realistic conversation. Yes, we are. I have another Yahoo if y'all want it. And then yeah. Maybe could, yeah. Well, do you want to? Okay. Yeah. What's wrong? Uh, no, I just we had that other question. I didn't know if you wanted to. Yeah, let's do the Yahoo first. It's from yeah. uh, Aaron Keese sent this one in. Thank you, Aaron. It's Yahoo. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. We're going to call them Paul. Anonymous. Okay. Travis decided that anonymous is the funniest name to call them. No, it's A. It's short for Aaron Anonymous. Aaron Anonymous. Oof. Still <laughs> asks. What does Robert want for Christmas? <laughs> Robert, are you here? Robert. Our group of friends are exchanging gifts for Christmas this year, but I have no idea what Robert wants. Hey, real quick show of hands. How many Roberts do we have? One. Okay, wait, keep them up. One, two. This is your day, Roberts. Congrats. Hey, Not everybody. As many as I would have thought. Can I get every Robert to just stand up real quick? Hey, everybody, let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you to all the Roberts for coming out. So cool, you guys. Thank you. Yeah, now to be, we, we didn't think we were going to get Robert here. Thank you, Robert. Now sit down, Robert. That's it. All right. Now, the people who are with Robert, what does Robert want for Christmas? <laughs> I, uh, um, a copy of... Terminator 2 on DVD uh -huh. so he can remember the great time he had shooting that movie with his friend Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, it's Robert Patrick. <laughs> Robert Patrick's here? Maybe no, some nice here. pulpy orange juice because it's Robert Loja uh -huh. and that's about as deep a cut as I can possibly deliver here on My Brother, My Brother, Me is the orange juice commercial starring Robert Loja. After our, after our show, or during it, if it keeps up like this, Google Robert Loja orange juice commercial. You're in for a real treat. Um, well, maybe Robert, Robert wants 10,000 American dollars. Choice. Always, it fits every time. What, maybe what Robert wants is for you to get to know Robert well enough to know what Robert wants. Maybe you haven't spent enough time one on... Applause! Weird that. peal of applause. Yeah, Robert's been in the dumps lately. <laughs> I need, Robert just wants a fucking friend. I need a new season of cereal to explain why that applause just happened. <laughs> I need a forensic examination of where it started and who was Maybe like, Robert absolutely. needs a friend. Yes! Yeah. Episode one would be like, blink, 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 blink. They certainly didn't earn that applause. <laughs> where did it come from? Maybe Robert wants you to fucking stop calling him Bob. 
Yeah, he would very much appreciate that. He's asked you so many times. I should have asked how many bobs we have. Oh, how know. many bobs? No, we're yeah, done. We're that bit plays once and sometimes not even that many times. Uh, how many people here aren't named Robert? Okay. One, two. <laughs> uh, are you these questions or one more question? I'm uh, not done talking about Robert. Robert's so great, but I'm actually done talking about Robert. Uh, Probably a blanket. How good's that last question? Uh, it's the one with the kid. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now, let's go to audience questions. Okay. All right. Sorry. Well, we got... Sorry, kid. I'm just going to read it. And then we won't address it, but now it won't be a fucking mystery. I don't want Serial Season 3 to be like, he said it was about a kid. <laughs> blink, blink, blink. I have a nephew who just turned three years old. Whenever anyone is upset, he likes to diffuse the tension by yelling things and being silly until everyone is cheerful again. I'm right there with you, kid. That's adorable. However, lately, his go-to phrase for this has been, fucking A, <laughs> which he picked up from my mom. While it's not a huge deal with us, he may be going to daycare soon and probably shouldn't be swearing around other people's kids. How do we get him to stop swearing? That's from aunt of a cool Seattle baby. This kid rules. This kid rules. Uh, I don't have an answer. Oh, hey, check this out. Hey, fucking A, you smell great. <laughs> That's not, that does it. That's fine, right? Yeah. Let's hear it for the boy. Uh, should we go to the audience questions now? Fucking A. Yeah, all right. Uh, can we get lights up on the crowd? So we have runners who are going to come by with microphones. Please stay chill and uh, about this. Now, listen. I need I need like full house lights because there's a bunch of people here and we can't now, listen. see them at all. I'm, what I would need you all to do, if you have your hand raised. Oh, yeah, we have two rules. All right. First, I want you to think, is the thing I'm about to ask an actual request for advice, or is it just a funny story that I think is funny? Please do not let it be the latter. We also, oh shit, there's so many, we did a bad job of walking into this segment. Uh, you know, the main rule is... No bummers! And also, we're going to pick two people at the same time. They're going to give their questions, and we're going to decide which one we can help the most with. And so that's how we're going to handle this. Okay, is this a, really all the house hat, lights? There's yes, so hat, hat with yellow writing. Yeah, a gold writing. Stay there. Stay there. You're number one. And then on this side, uh, sitting on the aisle with a black shirt, you're pointing at yourself. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, we'll start with you since you were there first. What's your name? Lisa. Hi, Lisa. What's your question? Um, so I'm in, char I'm in charge of entertainment for a company party. It's a global event. And I've accidentally, I've accidentally booked three different acapella groups for the same half hour period. Can we, okay. Can I get the audience mics turned up uh, like twice as loud as they are right now? Uh, because I want to experience every moment of this with you. You have booked multiple, three acapella groups for one party. For a half hour period. <laughs> and it's on Tuesday. <laughs> How do you quit your job? No, no, no. Yeah, how, do I dis how do I change my identity and move to Canada? Okay, that's very good. Wait, I do want to hear their request. For what, what do you need our help with? You did, did I make a mistake? No. <laughs> okay, what's your, what is the actual question? What, what should I do about that? Yeah, okay. we, we can work with that. What's, what's your name? Hi, I'm Lex. Hi, Hi Lex. Lex. What's your question? So I live with my boyfriend, and we keep getting into this argument over whether we should have a Lord of the Rings wedding. I am asking you to help me convince him to just have a normal, like, elegant wedding. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind well... of a closet nerd. <laughs> okay. Un I know that's a bad one to ask you. <laughs> no, well, hold on. <laughs> Because under and uh, between the beautiful cliffs of Rivendell, I think you could throw a pretty fucking elegant. That's ride. my day. Don't assume. The elves. The elves know how to throw an elegant soiree. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Okay, straight up, we're gonna do the acapella one. Because, the acapella one's yeah. gonna do it because that's the best shit I've ever heard. But you can help with that. But it's not that your question is not good. I can answer it in one like one sentence. Here it goes. Everybody, step back. <laughs> You only get one wedding, and everyone does just a wedding. We had a Lord of the Rings wedding; is way more interesting. For and sure, something. That Are you'll you talking get... her into it, or yeah. do you want? You'll get cool. Okay. You'll get better no. pictures. It'll be a no. better thing. Tell overall. them you want to do a Buckaroo Bonsai themed wedding, and then settle. 
And then when you can't agree, just be like, fine, we'll just do a normal wedding then. I love Buckaroo Bonsai. <laughs> what about a labyrinth-themed wedding? Okay, there you go. Thank Would you. you do a normal wedding, but both of you had to carry big, big swords? <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Here's the compromise. Normal wedding, but tell one person in the bridal party that it's a Lord of the Rings themed wedding. <laughs> should reserve that for what? Maybe your brother? Yeah. No, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and get like him, send him get... links to costumes, everything. There's only one person in your bridal party. It's Andy Circus. He's wearing a green screen suit. And then on your cut of the wedding movie, he's just wearing a normal tuxedo. And the other one, he's everyone's favorite little monster named Gollum. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. acapella groups. Did you book three acapella groups for a half hour? Or did you book one new super cool acapella group for a half hour? Because I think it's the latter. I think that this is a lot of behind the music start this way. Like, we were just three different acapella groups, weren't we? And we all showed up for the same gig, believe it or not. And we decided, hey, let's all sing together. And then... And that's, that's how, how the Beatles got that's started. That's how the Beatles got started, didn't they? So the polyphonic spree got You know, I... I if you just pay all of them and two of them don't have to sing, they're probably happy about that. <laughs> they're probably good. And you're like, here's your $30. They're like, oh, dunk. Okay, bye. <laughs> how did you... How did you, how how did did you, you do, do this? this? How did you fuck up this bad? How did you... Were you on a, like, conference call and you didn't realize it and you said you're hired and you heard three beautiful choral voices say, thank you! I was told to book some entertainment on Thursday and I just reached out to as many groups as I could and some with <sighs> instruments and some without <laughs> yes but the only ones available for for that were available in that close of a notice were the acapella groups <laughs> and what was the wording of this contact like you are hired sight unseen just <laughs> say yes it was more like we've seen your videos we're very interested were you lying <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> everybody uh, loves the video. Everybody, should, everybody they talking about videos. Oh, money's money, Frank. <laughs> I mean, everybody loves the pitch perfect, and so you can just sort of position it like LARPing pitch perfect, I guess. And maybe people at the party will be like, "Yeah, we'll give this a shot." Boom, body dude, and they like are really good at it. The house lights are disappearing. What the fuck's going on? Bye. Well Thank you. Did, did we that, help? Did we help at all? We didn't. We just talked about some bullshit. We didn't say anything even remotely helpful. Yeah, you know, we usually always help. That's so weird. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Okay, can we get the house lights back up? Yeah, because we're just gonna lose these fucking microphones. Uh, we will yeah, start no. with you. What's your name? Hello. My name's Emmeline. Hi, Emmeline. Hi, Emmeline. Hello, Emmeline. So, we have too many furries in our D&D &D party. What <laughs> no such thing! Next question! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to get us in trouble again? We're human! We got in trouble once, all right? We'll never do that again. Hello, Toronto! Toronto! We got a lot! Listen, I love the culture and lifestyle. You're all so supportive of each other and other projects. There's a there's a bit on there about five minutes later when Paul said he's like Paul said he's like, do any girls out there like to get licked? And yeah, it's a bad part of the a, audio, and, then, and I mean, there's a bad part of the audio. And then instantly afterwards, he's like, and God bless him. Paul Stanley goes, do any guys out there like to get licked? And it's like, good for you, Paul. Let's just ask everybody if they like to get licked. Huh? We'll just what about out. all our gender non-binary fans? Who doesn't conform to the gender spectrum but likes to get licked? <laughs> uh, we will consider that question... I do not know. <laughs> I, let me offer a small reason. Is it a party composition? There's not enough furries in my group. Yeah. Okay. Is it a party composition issue where everybody wants to play like a bugbear or some sort of... I don't know if there are furry races in D&D. <laughs> okay, yes, there are actually furry... That's so sweet. Okay, all right. Hi. Uh, What's your name? Hedda. Hi. Hi. 
Uh, so for the last five years, I've been trying to distance myself from uh, quite the extensive goth face. Okay. Right? As I'm sure many of us can relate to. So I'm here. For sure. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, unless you're still into it, in which case, stand in your truth. Uh, well... Something that's made that quite difficult is that my family owns a number of funeral homes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a number? A number of funeral homes. Yeah. Is the number more than one? Yes. <laughs> that's quite a lot of funeral homes. That's quite a lot of funeral homes. Congratulations. That sounds like a very profitable business. Congrats. To uh, yeah. Family. So what, what do I do when my friends walk past funeral homes with my last name slapped up over them in a frankly way too gothic font? You I flash that dead cash. <laughs> I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help you. It's time. I for think we're it. gonna go with this one. But thank you, thank very, you very, very much, much for your very question. Much. I'm gonna help you, and it's very. Can we get a round of applause for Emily? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Much for Emily. Get more furries. The lights. Again, the lights. If I could just have those lights back. Um, the lights not... do keep disappearing. <laughs> it's there time for you to rebel against the family business. And what do I mean by that? I mean never die. <laughs> Whoa. What a cool Jesus. thing for That's you to be like. That's not the opposite of being a funeral home. Yeah, person. no, it's like, hey, listen, mom and dad, sorry, I'm not interested in the family biz. I'm never going to die. <laughs> and he just loudly, and now, and like, anytime they start talking about it, just be like, death? That's for suckers. <laughs> I don't buy it. Show me the make evidence. Sh- make Show sure you do evidence. that while funerals are happening at the funeral. Uh, <laughs> Got another one, huh, death? What a sucker. <laughs> What a waste of cash. the coffin. Next time, try not dying. Yeah, that's my thing. And the thing is that's great about that is it works until it doesn't. And then you don't have to be there. You don't have to sweat it. Like, you're basically immortal in that sense, if you think about it. We're all temporarily immortal. Jesus, okay. And it's, now the no, existential is dread yeah, is, this is good great. Shit. Listen, this is the first time our show has ever been interesting. Listen. Listen. Do, Listen. Is it a fun funeral home? Is there a ball pit? Is there a ball pit? A funeral home. The ball pit is full of skulls. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm kidding. I'm is kidding. that the aesthetic of your funeral homes? Okay, let's No, it's very classy. Okay. Okay, straight up. Your family owns a number of funeral homes. You should just keep being goth. Because then people will see you out and about, hear me out, and they're like, uh, God. And then, like, you're like, come with me. My home's full of dead people. And they're like, come it's buy it on us. I'm sorry. There are some gross misconceptions about what funeral homes are happening on this stage. They're not chock a block full of dead people. Okay, they're not, Wait, hold on, hold on. They're hold on. not sorting through a queue. Okay, but statistically speaking, okay, so are there more dead people in a funeral home than your home? I. I am the oldest brother, I am 37 years old, and I'm ready to talk about anything else. I hope that helped, because this segment is over. (laughs) Thank you very much. All right, let's get those house lights back, eh? House lights way up. Let's get somebody way over. Okay, we don't usually do this for prop work, but somebody has a sign that says the dog pound, and I'm very interested. Yeah, Yeah, dog pound's in. Absolutely. Well, they want, I guess whoever wants and someone it. Someone has an actual dog with their hands raised. With the dog in it? Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah. this, here I we have this, a dog. I hope this question is about the dog. Oh, wait. Does the dog have a question? The one with the dog pound sign. Yes, the dog pound sign. You're holding it. Oh, yes. God, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Was that uh, it? I changed my mind. <laughs> the dog pound, we all have brothers. Do you guys fight a lot? Like, is that the question? Yeah, that's that's, that's not advice. advice. You don't need advice. It's just like, I want to find out a little bit more about those three crazy McElroys. <laughs> We never fight. The dog pound, like many other McElroy fans. What is this hive mind? Found out. We are dog pound. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hey, I'm What's Corey. your name? Well, sorry? Corey. Hey, Corey. Corey. And the dog's name? This is Falcor. Ah, oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Shit. Uh, see, I was going to make an Amadeus Amadeus joke. No. Nope. I backed off. What is the question? So I was at the dentist the other day, and the dentist was telling me about her favorite super movie, superhero movies. This is okay. starting to sound like a joke, like a joke with a punchline. No, 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 it's good. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. I mean, there's a jokey thing in it, but I have a real question. Um, while I had the dental dam in, she told me her favorite... Is that what it's called? Yes. <laughs> Grody, okay. <laughs> she told me her favorite character was X-Man. And... <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And oh, I no. She thinks 
Bruce Wolverine's name is X-Man. Okay, good, I, good, good. I couldn't say anything. Right. And then later it seemed too late, but now I'm worried that she's going to, like, have some dude bro. She's going to say this to him, and they're going to be really condescending. Yeah. So I feel no, like- yeah, that's definitely in the pipeline, I feel like, unfortunately. <laughs> that is- Actually, in fact, when she said X-Man, some dude bro somewhere went. <gasps> Wrong. <laughs> that, that you should, yeah, the windows must be very thick there, because I bet a guy was, like, flinging himself against it. <laughs> well, actually, well, actually, wait, actually... Dog Pound, thank you very much. Thank you, Dog Pound. I'm going to help this Wolverine. When you said you couldn't, did you mean because you were petrified by awkwardness? Because that's what I would feel if someone said my favorite superhero is X-Man. I would go, oh. I mean, I would get worried that this is some Silver Age bullshit that I didn't actually know about. I'd be like, X-Man's not a thing. And I'd be like, actually, in 1941, Jack, Jack Kirby did something or whatever. I don't know anything about fucking comic books at all. Our dad's backstage freaking out. Um, the uh, 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 Maybe this is a trap and you avoided it, but I used to do that with, like, I would say wrong facts because I saw something. Remember that episode of News Radio? We're not going to talk about News Radio right now. There, but the, one of the characters would lay out raw, incorrect facts, and when someone would correct them, they'd go, aw, geek check. I actually dig that a lot. So maybe this is a trap for dude bros. Like, uh, actually, it's Wolverine. Like, yeah, I know it's fucking Wolverine. And then they pull a tooth. Yeah. I knew it. (laughs) Oh, shit. Maybe they were just distracting you from the pain tooth of tricks they were about to pull on you by putting a little brain teaser in your... Like, hey, you know who I love is... Golden guy, and it's like golden guy. Who the know, fuck is the golden girl. guy? I don't even. Oh, my tooth is gone. They're pretty sneaky, Dennis. I would actually ha- rather have a dentist say that their favorite X Man, uh, their favorite superhero is X Man rather than Wolverine. Because I'd just be like, I don't know. There's way more interesting superheroes than Wolverine. It's just true. Is there? His bones aren't real. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to say Nightcrawler is better than Wolverine. <laughs> Wolverine's like a thousand years old. He hang on with Jesus. Nightcrawler is like a demon. <laughs> Wolverine's got metal bones. I can do that one twice. It's so cool. Damn it. You're right. Uh, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. I'm so glad you didn't correct them. There's still some. This is. We get these gifts. You've given us a gift because we will never meet this dentist, probably. But I know that there's somebody out there who thinks Wolverine's name is X-Man. And while that may bring you worry for that person, it brings me a great amount of joy because they don't know any, they won't know any better until some dude bro does come in and smash through the window. But for now, let's just celebrate the moment of X-Man. How does your dentist square away the knowledge that the name of the group is X-Men? Like it's X-Man and his X-Men. X-Man and his excellent (laughs) X-Men. I mean, they have Al. They do a. There is a band called Alvin and the Chipmunks. You ever fucking think about also, that? That's actually really messed up if you also, think about it. Alvin and uh, we'll just name them by their species, I guess. I don't know. Also, we're dumbasses. There's a dude named Professor X. <laughs> he is an X man. How's that better than X man? It's not any better. Does that help? is that anything? <laughs> is that anything? I think it eases my conscience a little bit. Oh, thank okay. you. That's the least thank we you. could do. Yeah. All right, folks, you can you can go ahead and drop the house lights now. We have got a uh uh wrap up for the evening. Um thank you. Oh, oh that was But so here's sweet. the good news. There's a whole nother day of PodCon tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. And all, all kinds of great shows will be there. Seriously, thank you to PodCon for having us uh, be here and get to do this show. You're welcome, you are fantastic. <laughs> I, as the only non-founder, can continue to thank the benevolent founders for gracing us. Uh, no, seriously, this is a really, really cool event, and it's really uh, special, and I'm so glad that uh, all these folks who I've listened to for a while have all gotten together and I've gotten to hear them talk about smart things. It's very cool. Yeah, not only I I will say it's so great to get to spend time with you, our wonderful audience, but also to spend time with like Francesca Lee and, you know, uh, Kevin Porter and Gabby Dunn and meet these amazing people who make amazing work. And to meet meet you also, we've gotten to meet a bunch of folks. A lot of Adventure Zone cosplayers which is fucking super bad. When When I look out at this crowd and think, 
God, every one of them is a podcast. It's so inspirational to me to see so many podcasts in one room. And uh, we met a lot of great podcasts today. And uh, I hope to see some more of you tomorrow. Toronto! Toronto! All right. This, uh, oh, and thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a yeah. I'm putting the days to bed. Uh, oh, hey, real quick. Uh, we're, uh, 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 we come from an area called West Virginia. It's oh, yeah. State. And uh, believe it or not, around the holiday season, uh, some folks there uh, don't have enough to make ends meet, let alone buy Christmas presents. And uh, every year there's a thing called the empty stockings list. And it's a list the newspaper publishes full of people that just uh, want to get maybe something for Christmas, a gift for a kid or a lot of times just basic necessities, a sleeping bag, a tent, what have you. Um, And we like to sick our fans on it and just like run wild like Hulk like in a good way and imagine like wolves way. but they're charitable it's like a pack of charitable wolves um if you can kick in a few bucks it's mbmbamangels.com uh is is that uh, uh uh thing and if you could go there and you can buy a gift for someone that someone is asking for and it goes right to them it's like the the, the it'll make you feel great and if you can do it um and help us help uh, our area that we'd really appreciate it. So thank you so much in advance. And uh, and thank you to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and check out all the great podcasts there. Yay, Max Fun! All right, final Yahoo is sent in by Level 9000 Yah Drew Drew at Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's an anonymous user, but I'm going to call them Pearl Asks. Why is the word asshole not censored on Yahoo Answers? Is it because the Christians are losing power? <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. Then my brother, my brother, and me kiss your dad square on the lips. Thank you. <laughs> MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. How do you say cheese in Spanish? What show should I have on my DVR? What are the best songs of the year? Is VR cool? What's your jam? Which one of you is the Renata of the panel? For answers to these questions and so much more, come on over to Pop Rocket, a pop culture roundtable discussion that always has a fun, diverse panel talking about the stuff we love. Catch us every Wednesday on MaximumFun.org or wherever you decide to get your podcast. I'm not going to judge. <laughs>